This is Border Crossings. I'm Larry London, and I'll join you as we welcome one of Japan's biggest music stars into our studios. Yoshiki Hayashi started his heavy metal rock band, X Japan, in 1986. And during their years together, they have sold millions of records and performed all around the world. Yoshiki is the band's drummer and songwriter. And he's also managed a successful career as a solo artist, choosing to perform classical music. Join us for this look into one of Asia's most talented and interesting artists, Yoshiki. He's here today on Border Crossings. Welcome to Border Crossings. And uh, today, a very special guest on our show. We are going global. We are, in fact, going all the way to Japan, where we have many viewers and listeners to Border Crossings. And today, it's a true music superstar who joins us on the program. Yoshiki is here from X Japan. We welcome you to New York City and to Washington and to the world. Yoshiki, nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, first of all, you know, it's an honor to have you on the program. I'm very familiar with your music. Uh, X Japan have been making hit music since uh, the early 80s when you started the band. And I know that you've gone through many different changes. And you guys are coming to New York for a concert. And I know that's very exciting news. Yes, uh, it's, it's going to be uh, this coming October 11th at Madison Square Garden. So we are very excited. Have you performed in Madison Square Garden before? I know you've been to New York many times. No, this is going to be our first time. We performed at a place called Roseland Ballroom mm -hmm. uh, year 2010. So mm -hmm. it's going to be the first time. And you guys, X Japan, have so many international fans. The, you, you performed tours in, I, I was reading, somewhere like 16, 20 countries. You've been around the world. You've traveled to so many different places. You've been to Brazil. You've been to, you know, all throughout Asia, all around the world. Do you have favorite places that you like to perform? Right this moment, New York. New York. There you go. October 11th. That's your favorite place. <laughs> yes, completely. <laughs> now, the, the last time that you guys were on tour was 2010. And so now it's been a few years, and, and you guys must be excited to be back on the road. I'm not sure if you have been touring regularly in Japan or if this is kind of uh, the reunion. Kind of, because our band have had a lot of ups and downs. Um, so we, we uh, actually, our band broke up in uh, 1997. The following year, one of uh, our members... Um, passed away. Mm. His name is Hide. Hide, yeah. So we didn't play, to, to play together almost 10 years. Then we got uh, reunited in the year 2008. Then since then we started playing uh, overseas. But last, last tour we went to 16 countries in 2011. Then, we, then during that tour, our original member, um, not that the uh, member we were touring together, but passed away. So we... Toiji? That was that a very that painful was? moment. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. a very painful moment. So we had to kind of take a break. Uh, then now, after all those years, uh, all those years, like we decided to very, very really come back. Mm. Yeah. Now it's not easy to keep a band together. And you started off, I think, was five members, and yet you guys are, are still together now. And uh, as I mentioned, you're going to be performing in New York. What do you think's been the secret to being able to keep X Japan together for so many years? Secret, hmm. I think like uh, because of our fans, we have amazing fan fan base throughout the world. So they kept us alive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you do have yeah. many many fans around the world, and with all the different albums you've released, there was something like fifty million sales. So you guys are uh, you know. Uh, mega stars, and I know that you personally have done many different solo projects. You also, um, and I don't get this transition, you'll have to explain it to me. That you go from the hard rock music to classical piano. How do you manage to make those the transition? <laughs> yes, I started playing piano when I was four years old and started playing rock drums when I was 10. Then, yes, I've been, you know, touring with my bands and recording with my bands. Also, I composed uh, the 10th year's anniversary for Emperor of Japan, anniversary song. Mm -hmm. Also, I recently I composed a theme song for the Golden Globe, you know, American, mm -hmm. I mean, Golden Globe Awards. 
you, you are a very busy guy. And, of course, you've done movie music as well. And you've worked with, I think it was Queen. Uh, you work with a drummer, Roger Waters for Queen. Roger Taylor. Roger, I mean, I mean Roger, Roger Taylor. Taylor, not Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not Waters, he's in a different <laughs> band, but Roger Taylor. Yeah, so yeah, we had a, co a collaboration. We made a song to get songs together, actually. Mm -hmm. You know me very well. Wow. Well, I know <laughs> you because you're a superstar, and and you also you're. Uh, how many rock stars can say they have an actual comic strip made after them? And I know you have a comic as well. Marvel Comics made a comic for you. Yes, uh, my friend. Uh, his name is Stan Lee, uh, one of the most famous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, comic creators. I mean, founder of Marvel uh, Comic. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, he made a superhero comic called Blood Red Dragon. So we're gonna be announcing a new, our new project at this coming New York Comic Con, mm -hmm. October 10th. So the day before Madison Square Garden. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be very exciting. And you're big with anime too. Yes, you do uh, everything. Just, uh, <laughs> you, you do everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just interested in a lot of things, you know, but my, my main focus is, of course, the music. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite part of all of this? Is it the composing? Is it the performing? Because you do so many things so well. Well, um, every, uh, every single aspect of music, you know, performing, composing. I'm not really good at anything, anything besides music, so, you know, all I have is music. So mm. And I, and I see you have aspect. a brace on your, on your hand, on your wrist. How did that happen? Well, I just did... Uh, 10 countries, 13 places, uh, the piano tour as a classical pianist. So there is play a little too much with the piano. piano. So it's, it's okay, I'm just trying to be extra cautious, just, you know, mm, so cautious protect for yourself getting, for upcoming my son's Garden. And you also, <laughs> I know that when you play the drums with X Japan, you wear a neck brace. Yes, my doctor told me to wear a neck brace. When I play dr drums, I have to wear a neck brace because I had a neck surgery about four years ago, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, looking at you, um, the viewers around the world would probably guess he must be in his 20s, maybe 30s. <laughs> How do you no, stay looking you. so great, so young? <laughs> well, just, you know, drink red wine, <laughs> then <laughs> rock, rock hard. That's the secret. <laughs> drink red wine and rock hard. I like it. I got to try. Actually, I have... You have your own wine. Own. Yes, why? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. My uh, partner is a Mondavi family for uh -huh. creating wines. So and you also have your own drumsticks with your name on them, you know. I understand you, <laughs> you're endorsing drumsticks. What, are, what is it that you haven't done that you still want to do? Because you've got everything, the wine, the drumsticks. What is it that's left for Yoshiki to still do? Well, we are still pretty um, unknown, you know, here in America. So... I would like to really try hard mm -hmm. to create great, great music, mm -hmm. then spread that music. Now, when you perform <laughs> your music with X Japan, are you performing in Japanese? Are you going to do some English songs, a mix of both? What, what exactly can people expect to see when they see you October 11th at Madison Square Garden? Okay, so uh, at the same time we are uh, recording our new album, so it's going to be kind of like a 90% English, but. In, uh, intentionally, we put uh, put like ten percent in Japanese because some people enjoy our Japanese lyrics as well. Mm -hmm. So, so well, could be eighty twenty. So, by, by English heavy, though. Know. <laughs> well, it's great. It, you know, what's outstanding is that you are branching into another language. I mean, that must be challenging for you because you're you're most comfortable in Japanese, but you live in the United States, and you're going to take on actually making a you know concert tour, perhaps albums in English. That's fantastic. Yeah, also, yeah, 20, about 20 years ago, actually, we had a press conference in New York. Um, that was the first time in Japan, you know, being in America. Then it was, it was a Rockefeller Center and Rainbow Room. It was a pretty big press conference, but we got bombarded by the American press. I say, why did you, got, why did you got to come here? You didn't speak English. Like, I say, you're right, so I'm going to learn English. So now I kind of speak English, so. Yeah, you do very well. You do English very well. What is visual, is it K? K, key? What is visual K? Yeah, visual K means like uh, we kind of invented that genre. Like it's like, like you know, like our band, we are like heavy makeup on and uh, play super heavy music and sometimes play like some beautiful ballad or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a very flamboyant 
gram style, some people may say, but it's a kind of like a freedom of how you describe your, uh, express yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, because a long time ago in Japan, pe pe people could not define like our band genre, our music genre. So they started calling us visual rock, visual K. Visual K means some kind of visual, you know, like some kind of subgenre. Mm -hmm. so. And what, I mean, you know, I also read where you believe that music can be used as therapy. So maybe you can explain that. Whoa, you really know me well. Yes, uh, I also study musical, uh, music therapy. Uh, one of my friends, actually, uh, she's my niece, had a heart surgery. Then the doctor did, uh, you use my classical music during the operation. I was like, hmm, that's very interesting. That he said that increases your, your ability to do anything. So I started studying about the musical therapy. Then actually I, went, I have a partners who's, uh, they are doctors. Uh, actually, he, one of my partners at uh, Columbia University here, here in New York. So we are doing like a lot of brain, like you know, how the brain reacts to the, what kind of music or, uh, so we've been doing a lot of research for that. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna take another several years to get a result, but. Mm -hmm. mm, well, that's fantastic that, you know, you're, you're branching out into so many different things. Now, I know that the tour is, uh, or the, the show in New York, is this gonna lead to a tour? Is this part of a bigger, you planned a tour in the United States? I hope so. I mean, right this moment, like, our focus is Madison Square Garden. So, mm -hmm. depends on how it goes or depends on what, what's going to happen out there. So, it's going to turn into another big uh, world tour or a big uh, North American tour. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. And how about a live album? Are you thinking of recording the Madison Square Garden show for a, a live album? Completely. Ah, yeah, live see? And, see? Yeah. I thought, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking with uh, you know Yoshiki from Japan. It's um, Yoshiki Hayashi, who is who is revered in the music industry uh, in in many different countries, and of course uh, superstars, iconic superstars back in Japan. And so you're here in the United States, October 11th, Madison Square Gardens is the big show. Uh, one of the other things that you do is you've created the Yoshiki Foundation. So maybe you can explain what that is all about. Yes. Um, okay. When I was Ten years old, my father committed suicide. Um, oh, so sorry. So, so then um, I kind of know the some, some children's pain, you know, who has, you know, who lo lost their parents, something like that. So mm -hmm. I decided to support. I I been supporting um, those children's. Uh, started maybe 20 years ago, but a few years ago I decided to create my own foundation called Yoshiki Foundation America. It's a, it's a, it's a 501 c non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. So I've been kind of like a donating uh, fund, or sometimes just I appear at some kind of like an event, or a, so I've been doing charity. Also, you know, there, there, there's an earthquake happened in Japan, mm -hmm. um, so at that time I, our foundation also uh, placed some role to uh, donate something. Yeah, yeah it's a very sad um, history in Japan. Of course, the Kobe earthquake, and then in 2011, another earthquake and tsunami, and many people lost their homes and their lives, and, uh, and you have been um, instrumental, as many entertainers have, in helping people get back their lives. Yes, uh, do, uh, the Kobe earthquake, that was, I think, over 20 years ago, so yeah, we, uh, actually, I donated um, the pianos to every single school who lost their places. So mm -hmm. then, yeah. Um. It's, it's very painful. I know it's painful for you to talk about. I, I, I also would like to, you know, shift a little bit on, on um, the touring part of the business, which I know you guys are happy to be touring in the United States and, and thinking about a big tour. What is the difference you've noticed between touring in Japan and touring in another country, outside of Japan? The response from the audience. Interesting question. Yes. Um, well, yeah, yeah, that was last tour, was the year 2011. We went to, you know, uh, Europe, South America, I mean, Latin America. Um, of course, at some places, like, you know, when we play uh, in Japan, actually past Ten shows or something like that was just uh, Tokyo Dome. It's a pretty big place, like 55,000 seats. So when we go to the dressing room or something, back so everything was there. But 
some place in South America, like, hmm, where's the dressing room? So we didn't have those. We had to change in the hallway. But I actually really enjoyed every <laughs> single process. You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's all about rock and roll. So some place didn't have enough lighting. That's great. So we are, we, we are ready to perform even like in the dark. <laughs> so that's, I can't, you know, we're back, going back to like our basics, like roots, something like that. Right. I mean, when we started training club, like we didn't have that kind of luxury thing, mm -hmm. you know. So actually, the, this world kind of world tour really makes me makes us realize like how how much we love music, you know. Without all those any like you know a lot of craziness besides like the thing, just uh, we just love music. So now I want to ask you because you you know I, I've always been I lived in Japan. I'm fond of Japanese people, Japanese music, and I know Japan is a, is a kind of a very reserved society, reserved culture, very humble people. It's about face. It's about you know you're not don't want to be loudest in the crowd and whatever. In American rock and roll, people are do some crazy stuff, as you know. Japanese bands, rock bands like X Japan, you guys also find get into trouble, just like American bands do, American rock bands. <laughs> well, we are very quiet uh, when we are not on stage, mm -hmm. but we go nuts on the stage. <laughs> so we go. <laughs> so we see. I, I know that I've, I, I've seen X Japan in concert, and you guys do go nuts on stage. <laughs> I stage dive too. So probably I'm planning on doing stage dive in Madison Square Garden. So, mm. so people, out. <laughs> wow, look out, be careful, get ready. So, uh, I mean, uh, what would you like to say to the worldwide audience, to Americans that are watching and listening right now uh, about X Japan? You guys are coming to Madison Square Garden. That's going to be a great show. But we're going to wrap it up now. And I, and I know you might have a message that you'd like to send because we're thrilled to have Yoshiki on The Voice of America. This is a great opportunity for us. Well, first of all, uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, and also, like, let's see, uh, fans throughout the world, you know, thank you so much for supporting us. There are some people uh, if, if, uh, who don't know us. Uh, please check our band. So we are a very interesting band. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, then please come to the sh uh, Madison Square Garden show. Mm. So. And you can get tickets, I guess, anywhere online that they sell tickets for the New York area if you're in the United States or coming to the United States and you want to see them. The, the show's not sold out yet, correct? They, I think they go on sale very soon. Yes, yes. So, tickets are still available. <laughs> all right. Yoshiki-san, thank you very much. Domo arigato gozaimashita. Thank you, so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. X Japan is the name of the group, and uh, they're coming in October to the United States, Madison Square Garden in New York. Uh, hopefully a new album will come out soon from X Japan as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. This is Border Crossings. I'm Larry London.